All right, how's it going guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about the topic of reliability with the Volkswagen GTIs. So as you guys know, I just recently purchased the 2008 Mark V GTI. And honestly guys, I'm in love. I find this just a fantastic balance of fun to drive, practicality, economy, just a fantastic overall car, especially at its price point. However, purchasing this car wasn't as easy. I, myself, like many others, have were kind of under the perception that Volkswagen's European vehicles are just unreliable cars that you shouldn't buy. So even though I've been wanting a GTI for years, I just couldn't come to grasp with purchasing one, being a student and not being able to afford, you know, maintenance bills, you know, repair bills over and over again. So with that being said, I spent months extensively researching the topic of reliability. And I've come to what I believe is a really good explanation on why there's such a weird perception on reliability. And I thought I'd share it with you guys because there seems to be such a weird perception on the topic of GTI specifically. So to start this video off, I'm going to talk about, it's kind of cliche, but it is maintenance. So maintenance is a very important thing when buying a Volkswagen, a GTI, or any European vehicle. In North America, and where I live specifically in Canada, I believe that maintenance is really taken for granted. People will purchase, you know, a Honda Civic Si, barely just do the maintenance, barely do the basic maintenance. They just do an oil change. They just do the most basic things, and they're fine. However, not all vehicles are like that. Vehicles like these GTIs, they need to be taken very good care of. Now, obviously, this is cliche, but I do think it's a very important thing to talk about when talking about reliability. Because honestly, it's the truth. People in North America, I'm not saying everyone, but tend to not take great care in terms of maintenance schedule. Like for example, I n have never once looked at an actual maintenance schedule for all the vehicles I purchased. Not I don't know any friends who have looked at actual maintenance schedules for their vehicles. And so when I looked up the GTI, you know, maintenance schedule, I was blown away with the detail in terms of, you know, what needs to be done when in terms of servicing your car. So when purchasing a used, you know, GTI, it is very crucial to make sure that they have all the maintenance records. Obviously, this is cliche, but do not take that lightly. If you're purchasing a GTI with spotty maintenance records, it can just lead to a whole world of issues. For example, my car, the Mark V GTI, has the FSI engine, which has a number of issues, including the cam follower. So the cam follower is a part that needs to be changed approximately once a year, you know, every 10,000 miles. But most people wouldn't even actually realize this. And because of that, the cam follower can fail, which can lead to failure of a fuel pump, which can lead to a lot of engine issues, a lot of pricey ones too. So to sum it up, if you're planning on purchasing a GTI, just make sure, and I can't stress this enough, they have all the proper maintenance records that you did your due diligence when purchasing you know, a, a European vehicle. Do not compromise on maintenance records, guys. Do not do it. Make sure everything is done on a timely basis. Another example of that is the timing belt. I see a lot of used you know, Volkswagen GTIs being sold right before they need to get their timing belt replaced. Huh, that's a little weird. And I'll tell you why. It's because you know to replace a timing belt from Volkswagen, is approximately $1,500. Lots of people don't even wanna do that, so they just wanna ship it out right before you purchase it. And if you did buy one, make sure you get it done, guys. These cars have interference engines, meaning if your timing belt does have issues, if it does snap, your engine is gonzos. So maintenance, guys, I can't stress it enough. When you buy these cars, maintenance is very important. So another topic surrounding Volkswagens and European vehicles, which I believe kind of goes towards the perception of the reliability issues, is parts. So. Depending on where you live, I don't know if this is necessarily the case for if you're in Europe, but in North America, the part cost for a Volkswagen is three, sometimes four times the price of the same part that you'd purchase on your Honda Civic. And because of that, when you're doing your maintenance, you know, obviously it is way more pricey. Whether you do it yourself or get it done at a dealership, it's way more pricey compared to buying a Honda Civic or, you know, a Ford. And because of that, people tend to skip things. They say, I don't want to get the filter done because it costs $100. Why would, I, why would I do that? Which then can lead to reliability issues. It's kind of this whole big circle. So if you're purchasing one of these guys, make sure you know that part costs are way more expensive than, for example, a Honda Civic. I think my oil filter, and don't quote me on this, I think it was $30. And I can pick up a good Honda Civic oil filter for like five five seven bucks so that's just an example that's a pretty extreme one but just know that part costs are more and i believe it kind of goes towards the perception that these cars are unreliable because everything costs so much to fix but no part costs are just more but that doesn't mean that you know they're more unreliable another big topic in terms of reliability has to do with aftermarket modding people improperly modding their gti's or assuming they can mod their gti and expect no other issues that not 
And that's just not the case, guys. So if you're expecting to do APR stage one, APR stage two, throw on a cold air intake, do full bolt-ons, you have to expect you know, some hiccups on the way because you're changing the ratios, you're changing the air fuel ratios, you're changing how much your fuel pump needs to work. And most of all, you're changing how much boost your car makes, which can ripple effect into a whole bunch of different issues. However, just because you get a stage one APR tune, that doesn't mean it's gonna to lead to reliability issues. However, it can translate into reliability issues, especially if your mods are done improperly. For example, if you get bolt-ons done without getting a tune, or if you have the stage two tune and don't have an upgraded, you know, high pressure fuel pump, again, it can lead to lots of issues. So guys, sorry if this video is kind of over the place, but to sum it up, I personally believe that GTIs are reliable as long as you're taking good care of them. Maintenance records, guys, I know it's cliche, but maintenance records are very important. Do not compromise when buying. Do not get emotionally attached when buying one of these guys. Take your time. There's so many on the marketplace. Make sure you're buying the right one or you can, you know, you can go down a path of constant issues and then you have the perception that you, that these cars are unreliable, but when really you just bought a lemon. I spent months searching for this one. Obviously it's complete stock. I don't know. I don't necessarily know what future plants hold so far, but I'm looking into some options, including APR. Anyways, guys, if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. Appreciate all the support guys. See you guys later.